What's this? This is a solemn moment in your life. Is it? In fact, it's a watershed. Huh? Yes, the government, in its wisdom, has decided that you're old enough to vote. Oh, is that all? Is that all? We had to wait till we were 21. I don't see why. No, you wouldn't. I wait for the vote, you never wait for anything else. No, we live at a faster pace these days. Not round here, you don't. I mean, we mature faster. Well, so does Gorgonzola, but we haven't given it the vote yet. <laughs> It does require a little intelligence. You don't have to be intelligent to vote. Of course you do. Then how do we get this government? <laughs> well, who would you vote for? No one. I'm an anarchist. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I don't believe in order and authority. What do you believe in? Chaos. <laughs> you have to tell me that. I've seen your bedroom. There you are, then. Ah, oh, yes, but every so often I go into that bedroom wearing my mantle of authority. Your what? My mantle of authority, and I tell you to get it cleared up. Otherwise, you'd be living in squalor. That's why we need authority. Not when it affects my personal freedom. Well, what about when your freedom affects my freedom? What? Like last week, when your freedom to sit in the garden with your transistor at full blast affected my freedom to sit and enjoy the birdsong. What happened? Well, you, wearing your mantle of authority, dropped my transistor in the water butt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> While I'm the authority here, you're going to vote. Now, there's the candidates. Make up your own mind. It's only for the council. Well, it's still important. You want a voice in local affairs, don't you? You mean vote for some self-important, power-hungry windbag? No, for some decent, hard-working person whose only wish is to serve the community. Now, study them. I shan't say anything. Brown, conservative. Yeah. Well, you weren't going to say anything. I didn't. <laughs> don't have to. I mean, look at that photograph. Will you buy a second-hand car from that man? He says he's served the war for 20 years. And we still haven't got a bus shelter. <laughs> well, I won't vote for him. He's conservative. Well, that's not important. I think you should vote for the individual in council elections. Ah, she's nice. Who? Oh. Judith Trevelyan Labour. She's pretty. I'll vote for her. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're not going to vote for a pretty face, surely? You said vote for the individual. Yes, but not because the individual's got dimples. <laughs> Besides, she's a miz. <laughs> a miz? A miz. That means trouble, Matthew. And she's Labour. So what? Well, they've never got in round here. Well, perhaps it's time for a change. You're wasting your vote. Go on. Hey, this bloke looks just like you. <laughs> it is me. What? Yes. Your father is standing for the council as an independent. Independent? Yes. I always thought you were a fascist. <laughs> That's all you've got to say. Surely you're a little proud that your father's been asked to stand. Yeah. Do you think you'll get any votes? Of course I'll get votes. Can you vote for yourself? Yeah. Well, that's one. I'll get more than one. In fact, I expect to vote from someone not very far from here. Who? Oh, you. Me? I suppose you know me better than anyone. You of all people can vouch for my, my integrity, my fair-mindedness, my ability to hold office. Yeah. So I can rely on your vote. No. I was counting on your support. Why, are you desperate? Of course I'm not desperate. I'm a very popular figure around here. Probably be a landslide. Oh, you won't need my vote, then. <laughs> my own son, fed and clothed by me, living under my roof at considerable expense, won't vote for his father. What are people going to think? All right, then, if that's how you feel. How much? How much? <laughs> to vote for you. Your first vote and you're going to sell it. I'm disgusted. Justed. Why do you think I feel my first vote and I have to vote for my own father? Not because I'm your father, because I'm the best man. Suppose you're not. I am. <laughs> All right, what made you decide to stand? Well, it was suggested down at the club. There's some talk of turning our bowling green into a car park. <laughs> I thought it should be right that we have a voice on the council. I thought you were independent. I am. Except where bowling greens are concerned. Well, I don't like bowling greens. Well, you're not that crazy about car parks, are you? Well, I have to think about this. It's just my luck. You walk around in a daze for weeks, and then as soon as he asks you to vote for me, you start thinking. Careful, Dad. Don't upset the electorate. I think I'll just borrow your car for a few minutes. What? All right. Yes, yes, that's right, Matthew. I've just filled it up, actually. Why don't you have a word with Ian and see if she'll vote for you? I don't have to. At least she has some sense of loyalty. 
Ah, oh, Enid, uh, I suppose you've heard I'm the independent candidate for the council. Yes, and it doesn't surprise me, Mr Willows. You always were public-spirited. Well, I was just wondering whether you... Uh... And you do have that clear, concise mind so essential in politics. That, together with your frank and fearless nature, make you the ideal candidate. Thank you. Councillor Willows does have a ring to it. Yes, so I can count on your vote, then. No. <laughs> what? Nothing personal, but I've always voted Conservative. Oh. Well, when I say I'm independent, I've always had a great deal of sympathy for the Conservatives. Have you? Oh, yes. But I think in these elections, it's better to vote for the man. I do. Mr Brown. I've voted for him for 20 years. I see. Well, I had no wish to denigrate a fellow candidate, but apart from being a pompous, overbearing carpetbagger, <laughs> don't you think he lacks a certain sincerity? No, I've always found him most sincere. And when he thanked me for my support, there were tears in his eyes. Do you want to see tears in my eyes? <laughs> I haven't got a vote yet. If no one in this house is going to support me, what can I expect at the hands of the electorate? But I don't like to disappoint him. But you don't have to, Enid. You've told him you're going to vote for him. He's happy. Just vote for me. <laughs> you mean lie? Well, it would be kinder, ain't it? People often do it. They tell the candidate they're going to vote for him just to get him out of the house. You mean just to get rid of him? Right. I see. Then I'll vote for you, Mr. Williams. <laughs> Just saying that to get rid of me. <laughs> that depends. On what? Well, I know you have a clear, concise mind, but a candidate needs more than that. He needs heart. I've got heart. Mr Willows... Call me Henry. <laughs> Henry, if you have heart, why have we been arguing against my hourly rate for the last six months? <laughs> <laughs> have we been arguing? Yes. <laughs> Enid, if you wanted more money, you should have said. I did point out that I was paid well below the going rate and the cost of living was rising. Short of fainting through lack of food, I don't know what else I could do. <laughs> but what's the going rate? Two pounds an hour. It's yours. Just like that? Yes. Well, I hope you take more care over the council finances. The rates are high. <laughs> <laughs> money to pay them, won't you, you silly... Go on, say it. <laughs> Woman, why do you politicians have such a contempt for women? I don't. I admire women. I respect them. I just wish we hadn't given them the vote, that's all. <laughs> Come in, Ms Trevelyan. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Everyone seems to be watching Coronation Street. Not in this house. No, I was listening to a spot of Mozart, actually. Ah, well, as you know, I'm your Labour Party candidate, and I wondered if you'd like to ask me any questions. Yes, of course. Won't you sit down, Ms Trevelyan? <laughs> Thank you. Now, if you'd like to know anything about me... Yes. Why do you call yourself that? What? Ms... I see. I noticed you were having difficulty with it. Well, I don't happen to believe that whether I'm married or single has any special relevance. But, but Trevelyan is your married name. Yes. Oh, I thought so. We grew up together. Did we? Yes. You lived in the house with the bay windows. We played together. Don't you remember me? <laughs> no. Now, if there's any questions you'd like to ask me... <clears throat> yes. Good. Uh, didn't you work at the bank? Yes. Yes, I thought so. Yes. I used to come in with the wages. Sure you don't remember me? No. I remember you. Well, yes. Now, I am rather pressed for time, so if you haven't any serious questions... No, no, I do, I do have a serious question, yes. Where do you stand on the new rates proposals? Well, I think... Yes. ...that a community tax, <laughs> irrespective of the actual income of the citizen, albeit reduced for the lower income groups by a means-tested rebate system, which simply transfers the burden of local authority finance at a time when the government has reduced the rate support grant from 60 to 48 per cent, from the above average and higher earnings owner-occupier group to the below average and lower earnings group, together with the proposals to reduce the business and commercial rates by government diktat at the expense of the domestic and household rates Quite. <laughs> My point exactly. Any other questions? Yes. 
Didn't you go out with a tall, thin man, smoked a pipe? <laughs> Thought a lot of himself. Yes. Yes. Whatever happened to him? I married him. <laughs> what does he think of all this electioneering? I've no idea. We're divorced. Mm. Knew it wouldn't work out. What a pity you didn't tell me that at the time while you were collecting the wages. Now, if you'll excuse Wait me. Wait a minute. Don't you want to know if I'm going to vote for you? Oh, no, I naturally assumed that you were going to vote for me. Why? Because of the poster. Poster? What poster? In the window, vote Labour. <laughs> what? didn't put it there. No. That was my son. And I wouldn't get carried away. There's insanity on his mother's side. Well, because he's voting for me? Well, let's face it, your chances are rather slim. Voters round here haven't returned a Labour candidate in living memory. Oh, perhaps I think it's time for a change, for some new blood. If they won't change Ms Trevelyan, <laughs> it's there in the form of the new independent candidate. What, do you mean the old buffer from the Bowls Club? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> buffer? Because he plays bowls? Well, I suppose you think it's an old man's game. Well, it isn't. Requires concentration, skill and cool nerve. It's been our national game for hundreds of years. Drake played bowls. And when the Armada was off Plymouth Hoe, he said, Terry, let us finish our game first. And he went out and finished up the Spanish. That's a bowls player for you. Oh, I didn't realise he was a friend of yours. <laughs> Who, Drake? No, the independent candidate. He's more than a friend, Miss Trevelyan. I am him, he, <laughs> Henry Willows, independent candidate. Oh, I see. And what do you stand for, Mr Willows? What? What are your policies? I don't have any. I'm independent. <laughs> I don't hide behind party policies. No, no. I stand in front of my neighbours and friends and I say, here I am, Henry Willows, the man. Judge me. <laughs> and have they? Oh, yes, I've been overwhelmed by the response. I didn't know I was so popular. Yes, the offers of support have been fantastic. Except from your son. Yeah, but he's only doing that to annoy me. Yes, he seems to have succeeded. And if you're so confident, why have you kept me here? Are you afraid of me meeting the voters? I've not been keeping you, merely delaying your humiliation. <laughs> We're a very close-knit community around here. We stick together. I wouldn't go next door. He'll probably set the dog on you. I've already been next door. He's promised to vote for me. Who? Charlie Smith? Yes. It's the last time he borrows my garden shears. Well, perhaps you're not as popular as you think. You can be too confident. I'll tell you how confident I am. I'm not just going to win. It's going to be a landslide. We'll see. I think I do remember you now. Oh, do you? Aren't you the little boy who got his head stuck in our garden railing? <laughs> Hello, Dad. It's too brute. <laughs> Pardon? Stabbed in the back by my own son. It's my vote. You said I could do what I liked with it. Yes, but you could have done it quietly. It could have been a secret between you and the ballot box, but no, no, you've got to put a Labour poster in the window. In the house of the independent candidate. What are people going to think? Looks as if I can't make up my mind. Just stand up for my beliefs. Your beliefs? You didn't have any a few days ago. Well, I've been thinking about it seriously. Well, think about this seriously. When you stand as an independent, you put yourself on the line. It's a test of your popularity. You find out who your friends are. Well, I've found out. I haven't got any. <laughs> you won't vote for me. Enid won't vote for me. Charles Smarmy Smith won't vote for me. Just let him smile at me over the hedge after this. <laughs> if this trend continues, I won't get enough supporters to hold a decent whist drive. <laughs> but, Matthew, don't you see? My triumph would have been your triumph. My success would have been your success. And it needn't have ended here. Who knows? One day I could have been mayor. Yes, we could have been travelling in the Bentley with a pennant and a chauffeur. 
the first citizen and his son. Mayor? But then you don't know anything about local politics. What do you know about housing, welfare and the rates? As a matter of fact, I have the rates question at my fingertips. And I know this. A community tax, irrespective of the actual income of the citizen, merely transfers the burden of local authority finance from the higher earning groups to the lower earning groups. And this, together with the proposal to reduce the business rate by government diktat at the expense of the domestic rate, is thoroughly iniquitous. Blimey! You didn't know that, did you? No! What would you do for the students? Well, I have a great deal of sympathy for the students. I haven't noticed. Well, what do you want? Rock concerts in the town hall and free condoms? You're just not getting your message across there. Well, perhaps we need a few more decibels. I expect people in this house to vote for them. I expect them to show solidarity and support. And if I don't get it, there could be a reduction in student drought. And the public interest. And future redundancies. <laughs> And as for you, Charlie Smith, I want those garden shears back by ten o'clock tonight! Thank you, Ah, Henry. Jim? Just like to say thank you for a sporting contest. And you, Jim. Yes, it's been a good clean fight. But at least we haven't descended to gutter politics, Henry. May the best man win. Thank you. (laughs) Have your work cut out. Think so? Oh, nothing personal, but the party has held this ward for the past 20 years. Good evening. Yes, but this time I think they'll vote for the man. (laughs) The man? Yes, she has a free voice, unshackled by party restraints. Good evening. Yes, well, with great respect, I don't think they'll vote for someone who's going to sit on the fence. (laughs) Better than voting for a puppet. (laughs) A puppet? I have given this ward 20 years, faithful service. And we still haven't got a bus shelter. (laughs) Got your car park? Oh, yes, well, that's all right for the Tories. They've all got cars. What's happening to the pedestrians? I'll tell you, they're getting wet through. <laughs> uh, trouble with you, Jim. You've only got to see an empty space and you build a car park. What, with ski slope? Oh, yes, but it's hardly functional, is it? Apart from the fact we get very little snow, it's facing the wrong way. First bloke down, it ended up on the A1. <laughs> I think you've only got it to practice your winter skiing. That is not true. Then why are you trying to twin us with Sam Moritz? No. No, it's time for a change, Jim. Help the old age pensioners. Good evening. I am very well aware of the problems of the old age pensioners. You should be. You've caused most of them. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I think I shall go and cast my votes. Oh, well, well you haven't got a vote, have you, Jim? What? I mean, you don't actually live on the ward. No. No, no. I suppose that's why we only see you on polling day. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Matthew Willows. The same. <laughs> Have you voted before? Oh, good heavens, yes, many times. Got a pencil? <laughs> There's one in the booth. The booth? Oh, yes, the booth. Good turnout. Little slow. Ah, oh, that's the rain. Bound to affect the Labour vote. Always does. Haven't got the cars, you see. Still, I think they make the effort. Tell you this, nothing that stopped me from voting. Really? Nah, it's your duty. That's the way I look at it. I'd go through fire and flood to vote. I suppose that's because I'm a political animal. Over there. Right. Is it a cross or a tick? <laughs> it's a cross. A cross? You'd think it'd be a tick, wouldn't you? That's the sign of approval. No, it's a cross. Yeah, but you usually put a cross when something's wrong. Look, if you want to put a tick, you can put a tick. No? If it's a cross, it's a cross. I don't want to break with established practice. I know where I'm putting my cross. Please, this is a polling station, not a political meeting. The ballot is supposed to be secret. I know that. I wasn't going to mention her name. Hello, Dad. Just voted, Matthew? Yes. I don't think you'll get that any smaller. You put it in your <laughs> box. I know. You've been very secretive. Well, it's a secret ballot, Dad. Oh, yes, yes. It's the essence of democracy. It prevents coercion and undue influence. You want to know which way I voted, don't you? No, no. That's between you and your conscience. Good. But if you want to tell me, I mean, that, that's up to you. What's the point? 
It's in the box now. Whatever I say, you'll never know for sure. Oh, no, if you're lying. How? Whenever you lie, you have a little smile round your lips. I didn't know that. Yeah, so if you're going to tell me, you better tell me the truth. Well, I wasn't sure right up to the last second. I didn't know whether to vote for my principles and the good of the community or for you. <laughs> In the end, I couldn't go through with it. I voted for you, Dad. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. That means a great deal to me. I know, I heard the car. Do you think he's won? Well, we'll know by the way he closes the front door. He's lost. <laughs> I hope he doesn't blame me. Why should he blame you, Enid? You don't know what it's been like this week, Matthew. He's followed me everywhere, even to the polling station. I've had less trouble getting rid of gypsies selling white heather, Matthew. <laughs> if he's lost, he'll be unbearable. No, whatever you say about Dad, he's always been a good loser. Well, Dad, who won? She did. Yes! Wow! <laughs> Bad luck, Dad. You did vote for her, didn't you? You lied. Well, I, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. Well, if you didn't want to hurt my feelings, you could have voted for me. What chance did I have when my own kith and kin wouldn't support me? Mr. Willow. And you! <laughs> Suppose you kept up the habit of the last 20 years and voted for Honest Jim. No. You didn't? No. I was going to, but I changed my mind at the last minute. I couldn't do it. Thank you, Enid. I voted for her. What? <laughs> I'll make some tea. That's marvellous, isn't it? Don't blame her too much, Dad. I don't. I blame you. My own son. It's only one vote. It didn't make any difference. Well, that's where you're wrong. Arithmetic was always your weakness. You vote for her and not for me. That's two votes. Enid voted for her and not for me. That's a difference of four votes. You mean you lost by only four votes? No. <laughs> 659. <laughs> it was a landslide. Even the Bulls team forgot to turn out. <laughs> I hope you're all satisfied. You're now being represented by a feminist pinko trendy who calls herself Miss. Mr. Willows, Mr. Vellian to see you. Well, oh, hello. Hello. You left rather abruptly. I didn't have time to thank you for that gracious tribute you paid me in defeat. That's all right. I've always known how to lose. <laughs> I, um, I'm giving a celebratory supper. I wondered if you'd like to join us. Me? Unless you've some objection to drinking with a socialist. No, uh, on the contrary. I've always had great sympathy for the Labour movement. <laughs> I'll get my coat. Supper. At the tutorial. Oh, lovely. Well, what do you think of that? I think that's what's known as a sudden swing to the left, Enid. <laughs> 